Hi, welcome to Cooking with Scotty. I'm Scotty. I'm going to show you guys how to make bruschetta today, um, which is a pretty simple Italian appetizer. They call it an antipasto, which means it's a cold appetizer. It's marinated. Um, so it's used tomatoes, um, baguette, which we're going to toast in the oven. It's very straightforward. Um, and I'm going to show you some techniques as well, like knife handling techniques and some other useful kitchen tricks in case you don't know what you're doing. Um, this works well as an appetizer for large groups of people. You can put it on pizza if you want that's delicious, throw on a salad afterwards, chicken, it's really delicious. The possibilities are entirely endless. Um, so let's get started. Did you miss anything? Okay. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna say step two while saying our good action out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we? Action. Yeah. We're gonna make balsamic reduction, which is super fantastic. Um, you can make this ahead of time, like a month ahead of time, and keep it in your fridge for the rest of your life if you'd like. It's never gonna go bad. Um, what it essentially is, is you're going to boil the vinegar, cut it in half, and it becomes a syrup, which makes it sweeter, cuts the acidity of the tomatoes, which is fantastic for everybody. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a well-ventilated area because boiling this shit makes it awful and you can cough up a lung and it's gonna be terrible for everybody within like a kilometer radius of you. If you don't have a fan in your kitchen, don't worry about it. You can buy the reduction at the store. It's just a little bit more expensive or you can just skip the step entirely and kind of be lame. It's fine, it's up to you, whatever. Um, so we're gonna dump like a healthy glug of whatever balsamic vinegar you want. It can be cheap and shitty because it's going to be delicious no matter what in the end. Yay! So, about a half a cup worth, a cup worth, it doesn't really matter because you're just gonna spray it on a little bit. So you're gonna turn the heat up to medium, medium high-ish, which is pretty good. Um, if you're scared of burning it because you don't want to burn it because it's even worse than inhaling it, um, just make sure you turn a lower temperature, let it simmer for a while, but otherwise just kind of turn it on, let it go, um, check on it every 10-15 minutes, and yeah, it's ready when it boils, and it sticks to the back of a spoon, and it's creamy and delicious. Balsamic reduction! Alright, so we're gonna cook the crostinis. Um, so you turn the oven on. I don't know how your oven works, but mine works this way. You push buttons. 350 degrees um, is kind of a safe bet for everything. It'll cook it, it won't burn it super quickly. And then while that's heating up, you can cut your bread into crostinis. Alright, so we're gonna cut the baguette into crostinis, which is gonna be the toasted pieces of bread that you use as the base for your bruschetta. Your cutting board should be sturdy-ish. Mine's not, but if it freaks you out, you can put a wet cloth or paper towel under it and it will stop it from sliding around, which I recommend. So you take your piece of bread and cut it on an angle or a bias. Um, you wanna make sure that it's about a centimeter thick, or like a third of an inch if you're American. Um, you're gonna wanna do long, nice slices with the bread knife, and make sure that the knife is doing most of the work. If you have to push down, it's gonna squish your bread. See, that one's really narrow, and that one's really nice and airy. So you wanna keep them nice and airy. You don't want the narrow and gross and smushy. Da, da, da. And it's the same thing when you're cutting something, you want to make sure your knife is against your knuckles and your fingertips are out of the way so you don't chop anything. These cuts with a serrated knife are more painful than with a straight knife. And boop! That's that. 
you can eat the ends because they're pretty good. Oh. to get them ready to go in the oven now because um, they're all cut into beautiful little pieces. It's not a Christina till it's toasted so now it's just chunks of bread ladies and gentlemen. Um, so you're gonna spread them out pretty evenly on your baking sheet. Um, doesn't really matter. Grab your olive oil. You know what? Let's put them close together because this is going to be a pretty healthy drizzle. Plug the top with your finger so it doesn't come pouring out in one big giant you know, cascade, waterfall, downpour, hurricane of olive oil. And you're going to go up high and just drizzle all over the place. Get it on the baking sheet, get it on the top because you're going to rub it all together in one big smothery beautiful mess. Like this. Because bread and olive oil love each other and they're gonna go smoosh smoosh. You want it to coat everything just slightly. Um, right. Perfect. Then you're gonna grab Mrs. Pepper and Mr. Salt here. Again, from up high. Um, it'll cover more area. Give it an even coating. Always season everything. Yeah. Alright, so it's pretty good and covered. This guy, there you go. It's feeling a little lonely. Rub it up to get more seasoning on. Perfect. And we're gonna throw it in the oven. Cause yay. Yay. Ba -ba ah. Perfect. Doesn't matter what rack you put it in. Top, bottom, middle. Use whatever. Put a timer on because nobody's brain is perfect. 10 minutes is pretty average. Um, could be 15, could be 20. I don't know how your oven works. Start with 10 if you just want it to be toasted with like very little color. Yeah! Stop, stop, stop. So, this is the color that you want. It's a nice, kind of golden brown. Um, if you break one in half, it's crunchy, but it's not rock solid. And that's kind of what you want to go for, because now they can sit out for ages and not really go stale or mushy. You set these off to the side to cool, and chop up some vegetables. Mm. in a strainer over a bowl when we cut them it'll kind of let the moisture um, seep out so that you I don't know it's just better you don't want it to be all soggy when it's sitting on the crostini or it's gonna soak into the bread and make the whole thing kind of gross so cutting the tomatoes I like to use a serrated knife if you use a regular chef knife it's gonna go dull faster and you're gonna lose more there's gonna be more liquid swimming around this way, the liquid stays in the tomato until you let it strain out and it makes much less of a mess. So, same technique as the bread. Claw with your hand, knife against your knuckle, and just even strokes. When you get to the halfway mark, it's easiest to put it on its side like this. That way you can get rid of the tip that gross little nub in the middle that is edible, but nobody wants to eat it, let's be honest. So let's finish the slices. Again, you're letting the knife do all of the work. When you get to that point, you can stack them too high, or not. It's up to you. World's your oyster. And then you can put them together and do a crisscross. Slow and steady, make the knife do all the work for you. So you don't have to. And when you're done, 
scoop it, throw it into the strainer. Da -da. Again, really gentle, long, slow, easy strokes. Don't get too turned on, folks. This is fine. Mm. Moist dripping. Moist drippings. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Yeah, just give your cutting board a little rinse off. Get those potato juices on there, and we're gonna switch knives and cut the rest of the vegetables. All right, so we're gonna start by peeling the onion. So you're gonna cut the ends off, both ends. And then you're gonna cut the onion in half. Get that shit out of the way. And you're gonna wanna make sure, see how this is kind of nasty? You don't wanna put that shit in your mouth. A little bit of mold is okay. It's not going to ruin the onion, but you don't want to eat it. So anything that is moldy, pull it off. And there you go. Do the same thing to the other half. Anything that's a little bit papery isn't going to break down and you're just going to be chewing on it for a while. So there you go. You got your two usable onion halves. Um, so just a side note, you can also use a shallot. It's the same family as an onion. It is kind of like an onion. Um, it's the same thing as an onion. It's a little bit sweeter and a little bit less harsh in flavor. So if you really hate red onion, try a shallot. They're really cheap. Um, they're pretty good. You can use them in all the same ways as an onion because it's the fucking onion. So you're gonna cut up just a little bit of a wedge here about that much. Um, you don't need a ton, you don't want a ton, it's just kind of to enhance the flavor of the dish. Um, create some complexity and flavor, add some layers, a little bit of contrast of color there. And you're gonna wanna hold your hand the same way, claw, hide your fingertips, knife against your knuckle. Cut it as thinly as you possibly can. Um, Take your time, be patient, go slow. This is one of those things that takes a little bit of getting used to. But it's the same technique pretty much with the rocking back and forth, making a claw out of your hands. And when you get to this point, cut across and it'll make it into a nice little mince that you can throw into your tomatoes. If you don't like onion, too fucking bad. Um, it's a really great flavor additive and you're not cutting it big enough chunks so that it's gonna be like an offensive flavor. It's just, it's just kind of nice. It brings all the flavors together, um, adds a little bit more depth to the dish. And also add some color, a little bit of contrast with the purple and the white. Everybody's happy. Everybody likes contrast. I'm not going to speak for everybody. I like contrast. And you should too. Ah, there you go. And you're going to throw that on top of the tomatoes. So just shove it off the end of your knife. Let it sit on top there, and we're gonna mince some garlic now. Buy fresh garlic. If you don't buy fresh garlic, you're wasting your time. Don't even bother watching this. Fucking buy fresh garlic. All right, so this is your head of garlic. This is a head, not a clove. And to get it out, you're just gonna dig your fingernail in along the side. Rip it open as roughly or delicately as you feel is necessary. That's a clove. That's a clove. They're all different sizes. That's probably about enough for what batch we want. Um, if you like more garlic, add more garlic. If you like less garlic, add less garlic. Super fucking easy. So you're gonna cut 
the tip off and the other tip off and just peel it back with your fingers. Da -da, get all this papery shell out of the way because you really can't use it for anything. Da -da. So, same thing with the onion, we're going to, actually, just kidding. I'm gonna hold the knife flat, press it down to crush it. Get all that juice out. That kind of makes it into a sticky little paste. And then you can thinly slice it from here, just like the onion. Rock the knife back and forth. Slicing motion, just like the bread knife, it should be doing all the work for you. I'm really not putting any pressure on this at all. And then just go back again. Da. I like to use fresh garlic because it has a much better flavor than anything else. Don't use powdered dried garlic. Don't use the garlic in a jar. It's like two tablespoons for the equivalent of this. So there's a garlic and we're gonna throw that into the mixture. <laughs> Action. All right, so we're gonna cut the basil. Yep, basil, that's what this is. Um, so rip the leaves off. Again, use fresh basil. Don't use dried, powdered, dehydrated basil. It's fucking gross. This is delicious. Trust me, it's worth it. You can grow it yourself too. Don't be lazy. Grow your own herbs. I don't grow my own herbs. But you should. Um, so, we're gonna pile the leaves on top of each other, like this, da -da -da, and roll it up like a blunt, or cinnamon roll? I don't know. So this is called a chiffonade, where you're just gonna cut gently along the side, and it's gonna cut the basil into these nice long strips. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your knife is sharp and that you're using the knife more than just pure force. Um, it'll keep it from bruising, it'll keep the color really nice and vibrant, and the texture will follow. So, da -da -da, just cut across again, so you just have different kind of sizes, I guess just to look pretty, and then throw it on in. Da -da -da. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, action. All right, so this has been sitting for a pretty good amount of time. Just got that little extra liquid in the bottom, so we're gonna strain that out, dump it down the sink, where we're putting all of our garbage today. We're gonna bring it back. Ta -da! Dump your beautiful mixture into the bowl. every last little bit out because everything counts here in the kitchen. So then we're going to do a little bit of a last minute seasoning. Da -da -da. You can always taste it. Less is more. Make sure it's to your liking. You kind of want to aim for something a bit like a potato chip where it's salty but not, you know, going to pucker your lips. Is that sour? I don't know. Then we're gonna throw some olive oil in, just enough to coat, about a tablespoon's worth, and mix all this shit together. Woo! Cause that's fancy. We're pretty much done here. Now we're just gonna throw all of our ingredients together, and that'll be that. Thanks.
instructions, all right? <laughs> all right, so we have all the components to the bruschetta all ready to go, so now we're gonna plate it. Um, if you're taking this to go somewhere and you're going to a party or a potluck or a funeral or a birthday or like literally anything, um, I would bring it all separately and then you can plate it there because if you put it on, it's gonna shake around, it's gonna make the bread moister. Moister? Soggy. Um, so, I'll show you when. Do, 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 do. So you're gonna grab a spoonful and just kind of hold it against the side to let the excess liquid drain off. Cause it's gonna keep bleeding. And spoon it on to here. No need to do it delicately. That's why we do it on a cookie sheet before putting on the plate. So if it falls off, don't fucking matter. Then a good little drizzle of balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. and it, just let it drip off the edge. And again, you can let it splatter if you'd like. It's art. It's great. People love art. And for the final touch, just throw some peeled Parmesan cheese directly on top. And this works really great. You don't just have to put it on crostini. Um, it works good as like a pizza topping if you want to throw it on a pizza just out of the oven. Um, you can throw it on chicken, you can throw it on the salad, throw it in a taco, throw it at a car. Use your imagination. Experiment, get a little weird. If it doesn't work, you know, try something different. Learn from your mistakes. Life lessons about bruschetta.